Using CSS image sprites is a great way to optimize the loading time of your pages. And basically, it works like this. Instead of using several different images for different parts of your site, you could use one image and then through CSS positioning, background positioning, you could set what part of that image is actually viewable. So let me actually show you how I'm using it in my example. Here is my web page and I have a couple of rows over here and each one of these rows features an artist and to the left I have artwork. Now this album artwork over here, I could have done this two ways. Now the first way, if you don't know about image sprites, is you could just set up the background of this cell to be uh, this picture over here, which I actually have. I have five separate pictures for each one of these. So now in I could have set up in my CSS that each one of these loads up each individual picture, the Eno, Hank, John, Miles, and Muddy JPEG. Now, by doing that, there's actually going to be five HTTP requests. And what that means is when the user's sitting at their computer and they go to your web page and they're and the CSS is actually, you know, crunching through in the background over there, as soon as it sees the JPEG, the browser's going, well, I need this Eno that JPEG picture for this background. So that's one HTTP request. Then when it goes down to the Hank Williams um, artwork cell over here, it says, hey, I need the Hank JPEG. And that's another HTTP request. So there's a lot of back and forth, back and forth going on. And this would happen five times. Now the difference is with an image sprite, instead of having five separate pictures like this, you consolidate all those pictures into one like the one you see here and then you could call in your CSS just for this artwork.jpg and now you're down to one HTTP request and from there if you want these things to not have obviously the same thing uh, the same artwork background you would use background positioning and some values in there that are going to adjust it appropriately so in the next few screencasts, I'm going to discuss just that in a little more detail. We'll go over how I created this sprite, and then afterwards how I implemented it into each one of these cells over here.